All right, ready to go? Yep. Cool, so um, I'm gonna present about uh, my service with the McConnell Foundation and uh, Reading um, for the past year. Um, and the title of it is Building Local and Regional Capacity for Regenerative Agriculture Practices and Forest Health. Um, a lot of the regenerative ag aspect is focused on grazing and uh, the forest health, fuel treatments, and wild, um, wildfire resilience. I uh, want to share a little bit about Reading and Shasta County, just because I was really excited to move up here. I've never been to this part of the state. It's really interesting and just quite culturally different from where I'm from. And uh, so I wanted to kind of share a map of the Shasta County, like greater Reading area. The area outlined in black is Ross Ranch, the demonstration ranch that I did a lot of my work at. But, you know, you can kind of see like, this is like the northern end of the Sacramento Valley and there's a lot of ag and rangeland in the bottom, but then it becomes really mountainous. You can also see the sad state that Lake Shasta is in right now. Um, and uh, yeah, so just a few observations I had when I first showed up here, like some of the issues that are affecting this community are water scarcity, um, like Lake Shasta is at 40% capacity. Um, irrigation for like ag has been severely limited by drought. Like I think the Anderson Cottonwood um, irrigation district got 0% of their annual allotment, which was pretty terrible. I think like everybody's selling their cattle. It's, uh, it's definitely like a huge problem. Um, and I guess just moving on high intensity wildfire. I've heard so many people talk about like the collective trauma of wildfire on the community like the car fire in 2018 was the kind of the big one I've heard talked about a lot, but there's been plenty of huge fires since then. Um, there's like a 300 acre fire in Anderson that's still burning right now. Um, so that that's definitely a huge issue. And um, you know, some other things like urban sprawl and development, I think from like a conservation standpoint, that's definitely like an issue. There's some really like beautiful and pristine ecosystems in the kind of Reading area and, you know, um, protecting those areas is really important and something that McConnell Foundation is involved in. And I guess like conservatism, it's like not a bad thing, but I think some of the ideas with like climate change resiliency are less talked about in this community than say like the Bay Area or like areas of coastal California, which I think in some aspect is really cool. Like I, I it makes my work feel a little bit more meaningful but it's it's also sometimes it can be a barrier. Didn't experience it a ton, but um, you know, it's, I think it's worth mentioning. And uh, I want to talk a bit about grazing in the area because that was what I was working on. Um, it's a really big thing. Like a lot of the, like I think cattle and hay is like the main agricultural products from Shasta County, and you know, it's also a big cultural thing over there. I. I loved going to the rodeos. Um, I thought they were really cool, but basically like grazing is pretty integral to the local economy. And I think that was why my service site was so interested in finding ways to make grazing more climate change resilient and like kind of test these regenerative grazing principles. Um, and my final part about kind of the Reading area is this cool blue oak woodland um, ecology, like these, it kind of rings the whole central Sacramento Valley area, but there are these um, really drought resilient oaks that are kind of adapted to low intensity wildfire and grazing in the past by like antelope, deer and elk. Um, and there's a ton of biodiversity and it's, it's really interesting because I, think, I believe I read that 90% of uh, blue oak woodland is in private hands. So it, it kind of makes my work feel a little bit more pertinent because working with local landowners and developing techniques to preserve and restore blue oak land um, ecosystems is, you know, what we're going to be dealing with. And 
hit Ross Ranch, it's primarily, uh, you know, a blue oak woodland. Um, just some pictures from Ross and Gore. It's also crazy how um, these trees look really small, but they're like incredibly old. Like they grow like six inches a year. So like this one over here is probably like, you know, like over a hundred years old or something. It's, um, it's pretty cool. Um, so talking a bit about Ross Ranch where I work, um, it's 860 acres. It's under a conservation easement. And they've been implementing a lot of cool regenerative ag projects and uh, wildfire resiliency projects. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to answer questions about this, but just in the um, kind of in the interest of time, I'll just quickly go through it. Um, perennial bunch grass seedings for carbon sequestration, um, legume seedings, kind of adding better quality forage and nitrogen in the soil. Um, Silva pasture plantings, that's really interesting study to see how that affects carbon sequestration. Wetland construction, there are these old gravel pits for making the I-5 and they turned them into wetlands, which I thought was like a really ingenious way to, you know, restore an area that was literally just like stripped bare. Um, and uh, we also do some wildlife friendly fencing and troughs, which are really cool. I'll share some pictures of that. Um, we're doing a compost and an amendment study and a lot of fuel treatments for wildfire resiliency. And, and I guess just to continue, we also have an irrigated pasture. I know that's controversial, but I'll kind of go into why we do that a little bit later. And uh, also just rotational grazing, holistic like rangeland management. Um, share some pictures of Ross. We have a lot of wildlife, which I think is always really cool. Deer, turkey, seen a bear, that was really cool. We have some bald eagles as well. Um, here's a Shasta Land Trust event. I mentioned Ross Ranch is a conservation easement. So we, we do a little bit of outreach and work with the, the land trust. Um, there's one of our NC, NRCS troughs. It's, uh, it's really cool, it has like, the gravel around it so the cows don't impact it and kind of create like this compacted area. Um, it self refills, it has a little escape ramp if like a bat or like a squirrel falls into it. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I guess just last thing about Ross Ranch is we work with a ton of different project partners. Um, Cal Fire for when and if we ever get to do a prescribed burn. NRCS, Point Blue. Um, Pray the Ranch is, provides the cattle um, to graze on the ranch. Um, Shasta College, we also, I, I got to work with their grazing program and their soils class, which is really cool. Um, Shasta Land Trust and uh, Wooten's Bees, we do some apiary stuff as well, which is another cool like way to kind of diversify the use of working lands. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to go into some of the projects that. Uh, I and uh, Kaylee, the other Grizzly Corps fellow there, got to work on to kind of expand the capacity of the org. Um, so we did uh, biologically enhanced agricultural management, um, which is like a, basically a fungal inoculant developed by um, uh, Dr. David Johnson out of the University of New Mexico. And we're trying to make it to develop these beneficial mycorrhizae like this um, soil fungi and apply it to rangeland, hopefully to see some soil health benefits. Um, we also do a ton of managed grazing, obviously, determining like the best way to graze the, the land to allow for you know, nutrient cycling, but also kind of maintain the health of that rangeland. Um, we also did some open space grazing, which was really fun. Um, but uh, also a little bit stressful because you know it's um, not like a closed private space, so you have to. You're really scared some cows would escape. Um, and we also did a ton of ecological monitoring and like soil sampling with, uh, especially with our partner biologist from Point Blue, Alicia. Um, and that's really cool. I think that's like kind of like we have all these ideas like the perennial bunch grass seeding, the you know rotational grazing management. And to actually see if it turns into anything tangible, 
Because like anecdotally, like farmers and ranchers have been saying this stuff works for a long time. And in certain other places in the world, they've proven it works. But in California, like there's actually just like a lot of question marks for things like carbon sequestration um, and like, you know, soil health increase through these, these methods. So we actually have to like do the science a little bit. And um, it's really cool to kind of help with that. Uh, and then the final thing that like I spent a lot of my time on was fuel treatments. Um, we did running saws mainly, but also doing a little bit of planning. Um, I got to work on like a GIS project to do a post fuel treatment seeding plan for our Mount Shasta property. That was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so we did a huge burn unit prep at uh, Ross Ranch. We haven't burned it yet, but um, you can kind of see like, we basically thinned this oak woodland, which will help our grazing. It will also, there's been a lot of like studies about thinning of oak woodland and it increases the health and like ultimately basal area of the oak woodland, which is really cool. And it also, there are just a ton of down trees um, and like brush buildup. So really just making it a fire resilient property. There's a lot of housing developments around Ross Ranch. So I think it really helps to have these well-managed um, you know, working lands to kind of act as like a buffer from wildfire. Um, and this is a picture from our Mount Shasta field treatment. Um, oh, and yeah, I mean, we also did a ton of like um, environmental planning. I thought that was kind of the main aspect of our, um, the career de development aspect of service. Like I got to work with GIS a lot. I got to like make grazing plans. Um, it was really interesting and I think that was more of the technical aspect of service. Um, so yeah, I guess I wanna go a little bit into just the reflections from service. Um, it was a variety of stakeholders in like working lands management and rangeland. It's actually really like, it's super cool to go to these rangeland conferences and see um, like the variety of backgrounds and faces that come to it. You have private landowners, you have ranchers and farmers, but you also have like bi biologists and rangeland scientists. And then you have like people from, you know, public agencies like Department of Ag and um, BLM. And you also have people who are just interested in like using these spaces for recreation, like hunters and fishers, um, fishermen. And it's just like, I think it's really cool to see all those stakeholders kind of involved and working together and kind of trying to like find a vision for like working lands. Um, you know, like, yeah, there's the conservation aspect of it. There's the economic aspect of it. There's the other alternative land use aspects of it. And finding a way to like reconcile all these, I think is gonna be like kind of the way forward because you know, there's a whole issue with like rangeland and working lands and that like, especially they don't make a lot of money. They're oftentimes being used for alternative things like development or crops. And I think for the future, we need to find ways to like incentivize keeping your working lands like ranches as they are like conserved as well stewarded, you know, working lands. Um, so that's like kind of one of my big takeaways from this. Um, and I guess kind of going off that, just figuring out a way to reconcile like agriculture and the economics of like agricultural production with land stewardship and conservation. I think that's why ranches are really cool is that you can have both. You know, it's not like row crops where you have to rip all the trees out, plow the fields. You can have this cool balance, but you know, ultimately it's really hard. Like a lot of ranchers really struggle to make a profit and oftentimes some like range management strategies might affect conservation or the local ecology. And so I think there really needs to be, you know, a lot more work and potentially like, you know, if we're talking about like a policy prescription, ways for like the state to incentivize this relationship, you know, whether that's like 
carbon credits or you know subsidies for infrastructure like um I mean, the Healthy Soils Program is a great example of like a good policy that can kind of incentivize landowners and working lands to improve the like ecology of their, their property. Um, and uh, another takeaway is challenges, challenges of reintroducing prescribed fire. Um, you know, I didn't realize like how much work goes into just prepping an area for a prescribed burn. Like it took months for us to get our um, uh, burn unit at Ross prepped. And, you know, even then working with Cal Fire was hard. Like you need the exact perfect conditions and it can take years to get, you know, all the people in place, get Cal Fire ready and get the property prepped to do burns. So I think prescribed fire is awesome, but it's, uh, you know, it's definitely more complicated than just like, let's put fire on the ground. Um, and am I over time? I think, uh, yeah. Um, well, okay, I'll just finish up real quick. Uh, grazing's role in the climate change puzzle, that was really something interesting to think critically about. Um, you know, it's kind of like, I don't think we're gonna solve climate change with regenerative grazing. I think there's like interest groups that are really stressing the carbon sequestration benefits of grazing. And really for like California, more arid environments, we just don't know. Like climate seems to be a major factor about whether you can sequester carbon or not. But, you know, regardless of that, I think like there's a lot to be said about the effects regenerative grazing can have on soil health and providing the ecological disturbance that, you know, our rangelands like evolved to have. Um, and, you know, ultimately if we can like make just like grazing and rangeland like in cattle production, like closer to carbon neutral, I think that's huge progress. You know, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, climate change is a multifaceted issue. Like you can't just solve it with like, one sector of the economy or one aspect. Um, so that was kind of my big takeaway is that, you know, I'm not like saving the world by doing regenerative cattle ranching, but it, it like I am making a difference and it does do a lot. Um, also can't stand yellow star thistle now. So it's, it's the worst, um, I'll, I'll, I'll end it on that. But um, also thank you to my host site. Um, it was really great working with you all. I'm happy to return there for the next year as a employee. And um, also it was great working with Kaylee. She's really intelligent and I just kind of loved hearing her ideas and her like critical thinking about some of these issues. So um, yeah, I'm happy to open it up to questions if anybody has any. Um,